Okay. Um, we're going to move to Rupert speaking to us just now, but I think Paul is going to come and read the scripture first. Are you ready, Paul? He's, he's on the move. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, tom- this morning's um, uh, scripture will probably come up on your screens at home, I'm hoping. Um, but it's from Matthew, I'm trying to remember, Matthew 4, there we are, verses 1 to 11. Jesus is tested in the wilderness. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus told him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him and his angels came to attend him. Excellent. Uh, Thank you so much, Paul. Um, This is, uh, I have to say, a very weird experience. Um, Standing here in the King's Hall, it's very lovely, it's amazing uh, being back, uh, but it's a very weird experience with nobody here, not quite knowing what's going on on Zoom, whether you're able to hear um, or anything else. So if you do have uh, any feedback, any things that have worked or haven't worked quite so well, please do uh, let us know. And thank you for bearing with us uh, as we get used to um, some of this technology. Uh, I have to say it was lovely hearing the worship, but it was incredibly hard not to sing. And I did find one or two words came out before I caught myself. Um, so it's great to be back and uh, echo all joys Uh, um, notes of thanks to uh, various people to make it happen. So uh, this morning we're going to be looking at, and I'm starting a a wee mini-series which I've called Tested, and it's going to be based around this story that we've read that's often called uh, The Temptations. It's where Jesus was tempted uh, in the desert. So I, I wonder what comes to mind when you think about the word tempted, Or perhaps you see uh, this particular image, which I'm hoping will appear just now, uh, of a chocolate box. What comes to mind? Maybe you could leave a few comments uh, on the Zoom chat. I'm sorry, I haven't yet worked out how to uh, look at all kinds of different chat on various other uh, platforms. So if you're on Facebook or YouTube, I, I won't be able to have a look there. But when you think about the word tempted, what comes to mind. What do you think about uh, this word tempted? We have chocolate, uh, sweet. Uh, uh, So just leave a few comments on the Zoom chat, that would be great. Uh, If you look at the dictionary definition for tempted, it says to make somebody want to have or do something, especially something that is unnecessary or wrong. So when we think about the word tempted, for me, what comes to mind is that I need to say no. I need to find some way of resisting and saying no to the temptation uh, that comes to mind. Oh, I'm very much uh, with, uh, I think, Amy and Simon there that says red wine. Uh, They also put down drugs. I'm not quite sure whether they feel tempted around that uh, as well. Serafina says books. So all kinds of things when we think about the word tempted. And I want to suggest that if we read this story 
of Jesus in the wilderness through the lens of temptation, I think we might miss the point of what this story is about. Sure, there is temptation there, but I think this story is much more than that. It's about testing. And we're going to look at this over uh, three weeks, probably, dwell in this passage. And uh, my hope is that it will help us navigate through trials and hard times, perhaps with a different perspective. Personally, this has been a really hard year. Uh, I think I said last week that uh, at the beginning of the year, I was planning a sabbatical. Uh, It's been, I think, 11 years since my last sabbatical. Our practice is normally seven, so I think I'm already four years um, beyond the seven, as it were. And I was looking forward to a sabbatical. I felt God give me this scripture and another one, actually, in Hosea about going into the desert uh, and this, uh, so at the beginning of the year, I was like, oh, I know what this is about. This is about a sabbatical. This is about an invitation to uh, journey with God into the wilderness and into the desert to have times of prayer and retreat. And I was thinking about uh, an eight day silent retreat on a monastery in North Wales and uh, planning times of prayer and reflection. Uh, and uh, being with God. And I know that desert is not oasis. Oasis is wonderful where you sit around by the by pools of life-giving water and you drink deep of God's presence. I know desert isn't oasis, but I also know desert is transformational. It is a place of encountering God. And I assumed that when these scriptures really came alive to me at the beginning of the year, that this was all about sabbatical. And then 2020 has happened with all the challenges that that year has brought to me personally and to many of us. But I still sense that this scripture is for me, just not in the way that I thought it was. And I wonder whether it might be helpful for a number of other people, helpful for us as a church. We're just going to look particularly at verses 1 and 2 here in Matthew uh, chapter 4 today as I just begin to open up this subject. Verse 1, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. So firstly, um, this word tempted, uh, he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. In some of your translations, if you read the NIV translation, which Paul read uh, earlier on today, uh, there may be a little footnote that says this word can also be translated tested. And I think it makes more sense to think about this passage as being a testing rather than a temptation. We have just thought a few moments ago about what the word temptation might mean to us. Chocolate, red wine, uh, and all kinds of other things like that. But I wonder what the word testing might conjure up for you. What might come to mind when you think about that? For me, it would be about exams. So I'd like to suggest that this story is about testing, and I hope by the end of it we can see that as a really positive thing that happens that can help us grow and navigate through some of the hard times. I'll say a bit more about why I think it's tested as we go through this series and a bit later on this morning. So the first thing is I want to suggest it's tested, not tempted. The second thing is I want us to notice at the beginning of verse 1 the different characters in this story. Jesus was led by the Spirit to the wilderness. Now sometimes when we go through hard times, we can often think, God, where are you? Why? Where are you? What have you done? I can't sense your presence, etc., etc. Now, I... I I want us to notice here that Jesus was in the wilderness because the Holy Spirit was with him and had led him there. So when we go through hard times, when we are in these trials and testings and difficult experiences, firstly to recognize that God is with us. He doesn't 
disappear or leave us alone. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. But I want us to note here in this passage that the biblical writers are very clear about it here, trying to draw a distinction that the origins of this hard time, the testing of uh, Jesus, was not God. But in this story, it's called the devil or the tempter or Satan. Uh, Different words are used to uh, recognize that there is a power of evil or darkness that is testing Jesus. And so when we enter into difficult times, difficult seasons, to remember that God is with us, but he is not the originator. He is not the author of those hard times. When we think about this pandemic and what we're in, I don't believe for a minute that God is the author of this pandemic, but I do believe that God is with us in the midst of us, and he's doing something in us and through us that can potentially be quite significant. We can hold on to both of these things, that God did not cause the pandemic, but he's also doing something powerful and amazing in our lives and through us. Thirdly, I want us to notice the word 40. Now, I was, um, I had uh, uh, a little uh, meeting with uh, a small group of the youth uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I said to them, uh, I'd like you to, to uh, look at this passage, and you're going to help me craft a sermon. So they were really up for this. They wanted to know whether they were going to be quoted, and uh, they wanted to know uh, which bits I was going to use or not use. But we read this passage, and I just asked them loads of questions. What struck you? What seems strange? What seems important? What questions do you have uh, about this passage? What do you think the main point of the passage is all about? And it was fascinating hearing these 14, 15, 16-year-old boys. Uh, there, were, there were four of them, two were my own. Um, so we were uh, following the government guidance at that time, just so you know. And um, we were just looking at this passage. And uh, one of them said, well, I... I I think this word 40 is really significant, but I don't really know why. So we started exploring and talking about why is this word 40 uh, really significant. And if you were a listener 2,000 years ago to this story, if you were listening to it then, the word 40 would have immediately rung a whole bunch of bells about some stories that would have been told and passed down generation to generation about the history of Israel. 40 is a significant number in the Bible. 40 often denotes a significant period of time. And it's often used in the Bible as as a way of marking that something has happened, there's a significant period of time, and then there's something really important that's about to happen. So you'll see 40, for example, in the story of Noah and the ark. So 40 is used as this kind of way of denoting a significant period of time in between two events that you're meant to take notice of. It's it's the way that in the scriptures, when you see the word 40, it's like, take note of what's happening here. This is important. But also, 40 denotes a period of testing, And in specifically, the word 40 would draw the original hearers back to the story of Israel and the story of Moses in particular. And we'll see in a minute what's happening here is that in Matthew's gospel, what they're doing is um, inviting us to compare and contrast Moses and Jesus to see what some of the similarities and the differences are. So 40 is the number of years that Moses was in the desert before he had a profound encounter with God that led him back to the people, his people who were in slavery in Egypt, 40 years in the desert, 40 days and nights, exactly the same phrase that is used here in this passage, is used of Moses when he fasted before he got what we now call the Ten Commandments, these laws or ways of living from God. 
40 is the number of years that Israel journeyed through the wilderness when they had been released from the slavery in Egypt and before they entered into the land that God had promised them. 40 years of journeying through the wilderness. So if you were listening to this story 2,000 years ago, if you are listening to this story as part of the Jewish tradition and understanding these stories, you would have immediately thought about this in light of the story of Israel exiting Egypt, coming out of slavery, going through the wilderness for 40 years, led by Moses, who fasted for 40 days, who had taken 40 years before his encounter with God in Exodus chapter 3 around the burning bush. You would have immediately thought about this story. And to just drive home the point, just in case it wasn't absolutely evident if you were a listener 2,000 years ago, the quotes that come, that Jesus quotes when it says, it is written, he's quoting scriptures that refer back to this story. And there's one scripture in particular that seems really significant for this story in Matthew chapter four. You'll find it in Deuteronomy chapter eight. And Deuteronomy tells this story of Israel coming out of the slavery uh, in Egypt and moving into the promised land. And you find in this bit, Jesus quotes from this in the first First of the testings uh, in, in verse 2, and I think you'll see this up on your screen uh, just now. It says, um, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness those 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So this story, 40, is meant to remind us of the story of Israel when they were in slavery in a foreign land, Egypt, and Moses, the leader, came, and through a, a set of miraculous circumstances brought them out of slavery. They had been promised a land on the edge of the Mediterranean, a physical space that would be theirs. It's called the promised land. It's described as a land that's flowing with milk and honey because it was fertile and fruitful. It's a land where they could plant their crops, grow their vineyards, live, and be prosperous and multiply and yet they didn't enter straight into the promised land because they were tested in the desert would they remain faithful to God would they do things God's way and they didn't they failed those tests and so they stayed in the desert for 40 years and the generation that had come out of Egypt died in the desert without ever entering into the promised land so there's a couple of ways in which we can read this story the first is it's a story about Jesus well duh but it's a story about Jesus and Moses it's a story about Jesus and Israel it's a story that where Israel failed because they were in this desert and they, they had, we haven't got time to look at this just now, but I will maybe look at it on a future one. There were three tests that Israel had in the desert as they went through this wilderness experience. Would they remain faithful to God? Would they trust him? And they failed each of those tests. And so they stayed in the desert for 40 years. And each of those tests that Israel had are exactly the same that Jesus has in this story. And Jesus passed those tests. And he, the, what we're invited to, to, to come to is that Jesus passes the test so that we can enter into the promised land. So this is a story about Jesus and how he passes the test so that the promised land, the land of blessing, of fruitfulness, of life, of home for Israel that they hadn't entered into because they failed the test, Jesus passed them and he has entered into the promised land. And this is great news. This is fantastic news for us because if we're part of Jesus' family, 
if we're connected with Jesus, he's gone before us. He's passed the tests. He's made a way. And because we're part of his family, we are included in the place of blessing. It's a little bit like when I was 11 years old, my mum and dad, uh, they bought a new house and um, so they had to pack up at the old house. I, uh, I suspect they probably got removal people in, but we went to school one day and then uh, we went to stay with friends for, um, my memory seems like it was about a month, but it was probably two or three nights. I can't remember exactly. And, uh, <laughs> And then when we came back from school, after those two or three nights, we moved into this new house. Now, I had done nothing. I had not paid for it. I had not contributed to a mortgage. I had done nothing to pack up or to unpack. But because I was in the family, connected to my mum and dad, I found a new home. And that's what it is with Jesus. When we are connected to him, when we pledge our allegiance, put our faith and our trust in Jesus, because he has journeyed through the wilderness and he's passed the tests and he's entered into the promised land, we are included in that promise just because we're connected to him. That is fantastic news, isn't it? I think that's fantastic news. So this is a story about Jesus, but it's also a story about us. And I'm drawing to a close here with this. It's a story that we can identify with when we go through hard times and trials and pressure and stress. Jesus' story is our story. We're going to look specifically at the different temptations in two weeks' time. Um, Colin is going to, Colin Symes is going to be speaking next week, but in two weeks' time we'll come back and we'll look at the different tests that Jesus had here and what we might learn from them and how they might help us go through trials and difficult uh, times. And I'd invite you at this point to um, take over the next two weeks to look at these different tests, these three different tests that Jesus goes through, and to think about how they might apply to us, how they might be relevant uh, for us, so that we can be more fully alive, find life, and be who we are meant to be. So this is a story that we can identify with. And the invitation is for us to come into life when we engage with the trials and the difficulties and the challenges of life and remain faithful to God. That there is, if you like, a promised land that we can personally enter into. Maybe for us as a church that we can enter into a land, a space, a place of blessing and of life, of home and of anointing. I want us to note that in Luke's gospel, when he tells this story, Jesus, when he goes into the wilderness, he's described as being full of the Spirit. But when Jesus comes out of the wilderness, he is described as the the power of the Spirit was upon him. He leaves in the power of the Spirit. Something had changed in the life of Jesus as he goes through these testings and remains faithful to God. And he comes out with a greater level of power, of anointing, of God's help upon him. It's a little bit like God is saying, okay, you faced some of these challenges and you've proved that you are faithful in your responses here. So I can trust you with the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's at that point that we see Jesus doing these amazing uh, miracles. So this is a story about us, about how we engage with difficult, challenging, hard times and how we can be faithful to God and how as we journey through them that God somehow expands our capacity to contain the presence of God and be carriers of the presence of God into a world that is desperately needing the peace and the hope and the joy and the life that the presence of God brings. We can contain and hold 
hold and carry the presence of God. And God can pour his spirit out upon us as we engage with some of these challenges and remain faithful to God. So coming back to myself and this story and sabbatical that I thought was about prayer and retreats and silent and monasteries and eight days and all that kind of stuff, I've realized that this story isn't about a sabbatical for me. It's about how am I going to journey through some of the most testing and difficult season of my life as I lead and as some personal things uh, going on as well. It's a story of how can I remain faithful to God in the way that I react and respond at times of stress and pressure. We won't always get it right. Last week was a really tough week in the family, Ward family. Uh, One of our children had a cough. We went for a test. They lost the test. We were self-isolating at home. Our kids were up the wall. One of our children said his ambition on one day when I asked him, I said, what do you want to do today? He said, I just want to make sure I don't kill any of my siblings. So it was a tough week. I really identified with that. I'm just joking, by the way. I mean, you know, none of us were really literally, but it was a tough week. And I pitched up at a leadership team meeting on Friday morning when we were still in prison in our home when we knew that this child only had a cold and feeling frustrated about the system and everything else. And I just was angsty and grumpy and and people were asking me what was going on and I was responding really badly. And then we prayed and I was like, oh God, that's not a very godly response here. Guys, I'm so sorry for my, you know, setting the tone in such a bad way. So we won't always respond well, but we can as we engage with these testings, find God doing something in us that we emerge out of times of pressure and stress, different. And I want to just finish with this phrase that we find in Deuteronomy chapter eight, where it says that they will, Israel went through the desert 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart. So in my experience, it's at times of pressure and stress. It's at times of testing and difficulty and challenge that what comes up is what's always been in my heart. And sometimes it's pretty ugly. It's what I'm quite adept at keeping beneath the surface and dealing and managing with. But at times of stress and pressure, it comes up. And it's because God wants to change us and transform us. And so I want to leave us with this question. What is coming up for you during this season? I think most of us have had ups and downs over the last few months. Maybe it was in lockdown. Maybe it's coming out of lockdown. Maybe it's been days or weeks. Maybe it's about work or finances. Maybe it's about loneliness or relationships. Maybe it's about people that you've been living with that actually in this enclosed and concentrated, pressurized, stressful of lockdown, you have found tensions have emerged in relationships. Maybe it's been at work. Whatever it is, most of us, I think, have experienced challenging, difficult and hard times during lockdown or coming out of lockdown at various points. What has come up in your heart? What have you noticed about yourself that just maybe the Holy Spirit wants to put his finger on and do something about. Let's pray. Let's just take a moment. In God's presence, What has come up in your heart during lockdown? or as we've begun to emerge.
What have you noticed about yourself? And just in this moment of silence, just bring this before the Lord. In the coming weeks, we're going to look at what were some of the specific temptations, testings that Jesus had, and how that might help us and encourage us as we go through some ourselves, but just for the moment. And perhaps over the next two weeks, just reflect what's come up for me over the last six months. What's emerged in my heart that maybe the Holy Spirit wants to do something about to help us change us, to transform us. And I hold these things in your presence, Lord. Lord, they're difficult, sometimes challenging seasons, but I thank you that you invite us to life. You invite us to promised land. You invite us to blessing, to fruitfulness. And that's where you want us to walk into. And sometimes these things that emerge in our hearts hold us back from fully embracing and engaging with the life that you've got for us. And so, Father, I I want to pray, would you bring up in our hearts, would you show us what it is, Holy Spirit, that you're doing in us so that you can transform us and change us? Thank you that Jesus has gone before us. He's our champion. He's our hero. He's made a way. He's created a path. We walk in his footsteps. We walk uh, in allegiance to him. Thank you so much for that. And Father, as we walk in those footsteps, help us too to make choices and decisions and ways in which we can remain faithful to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.